creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? Come on, come on, come on. Name above every other name. What can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? You are able, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. You are able. Come on, great and mighty God. You are able, Jesus. There is nothing, nothing you cannot do, nothing you cannot change, nothing you cannot turn around. You're able, I put my trust in you, put my trust in you. You are able. Great and mighty God, you are able, Jesus. Come on, come on, there is nothing, come on, nothing you cannot do, nothing you cannot change, nothing you cannot turn around. You are able, I put my trust in you. I put my trust in you, you are able, great and mighty God, you are able, Jesus, you are able, great and mighty God, you are able, Jesus, let's start from the top. Creator of the universe, that's God for you. What can't you do? What can't you do, my God? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Creator of the universe, it's my God. What can't he do? Everything he can. What can't you do, Jesus? Sing it out. He is able. He's a great and mighty God. He is able. It's Jesus. Sing it out. Sing it out. He is able. He's the great and mighty God. He is able. It's Jesus. Why? Come on. There is nothing, nothing that cannot do. Nothing he cannot change, nothing he cannot turn around. He is able, so put your trust in him, put your trust in God. He is able, he's a great and mighty God. He is able, he's Jesus. There is nothing, nothing that cannot do. Woo! Nothing that cannot change. Tell me, nothing that cannot turn around. God is able. So put your trust in Him. Yes, put your trust in Him. Cause He's able. He's the great and mighty God. Yes, it's able. It's Jesus. Yes, it's able. My God is able, able, great and mighty God. Yes, it's able. It's Jesus. Okay, people. I can just go on and on and on and keep singing that song. I really, really love it. It's by Snatch. Or is it? Tasha Cops or Snatch? I don't know, one of them. But I love the song. There is nothing God cannot do. There's nothing God cannot change. This song is kind of connected to a song that actually got me to get a right perspective about life and about God. 
You know, like before I used to think like there's some things that God doesn't bother about. Or basically, I would say in my mind, it felt like, God, you can't do this one. So let me just do it for myself and then get to do the ones that you can do, you know, like that. So it's like the one song that says I've made it too small in my eyes, be magnified. So but now I see my wrong because you show yourself strong every time and there is really nothing God cannot do. There is just absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing. I always say I talk about my nails. My nails, I approve of it. Because to some people, you feel like that's petty. Why would you go to God and you're asking for him to get your nails fixed? You know, like nails, princess? Like people are asking for way better things and you're asking for nails. Of course, that was an issue to me. And God knows that if it's an issue to me, then it's an issue to him. So he gave me the nails that I wanted. For whatever reason I wanted it, I guess he knew that I didn't want it for any bad reason. So he gave it to me because I told him that I like to be natural. I want to be like natural, natural, everything. So I don't want to put nail polish and stuff. This is my personal desire. And God actually granted it to me. And when people look at my nails, they feel like I've put nail polish. I haven't. They're natural. I'm like a natural freak, you know, like that. So I really like things as natural as possible. So that's what I told God. And I told him that if if I had to keep my nails natural and not use nail polish, then I want it natural. So he gave it to me because he knew that it was for a good reason. So please, don't let anybody fool you that whatever you want to ask from God is petty. It's not. If it's not petty to you, it's not petty to God. I gave us a, a testimony about one of my pastors. It was also something that looked like it was petty. He had this dress that he really loved. He said, I don't, I can't remember if it was a gift or he bought it when he traveled. So he knew he was not going to be able to get that kind of dress anywhere again. And he really, really loved the dress. So it got stained. There was a stain on it that felt like the stain was never going to come out. So he was like, he was really bothered about it. And he told God, he said, for some weird reason, he felt like he should ask God about it. And the Holy Spirit gave him something to do. And he did it and the stain came out. If he was worried about that thing, he will not do the things that God wants him to do. So God will have to address that thing. That's the point. That's the point. And I was saying, because there was a friend of mine, there was um, one of my classmates when like close to each other's um, dormitory when we were in boarding school. So I was like, she had this really cute nails and stuff. So I, I, I used her nails as the example. And my nails used to break. Now they don't. My nails are really hard. You can actually bend it. So, um, I used that as the example. I'm like, God, if you can give it to this person, you can give it to me as well. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I just know that my nails have to be like French manicures. I don't know how you're going to do it. People of God, this is me today. I have nails that look like French manicures. A lot of people think my nails have nail polish, but they don't. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Let nobody deceive you. And it's about time we start going to God like we'll go to our parents, like you go to your biological father. I know not everybody had this really great relationship with their biological fathers. So sometimes it's really hard to connect God to their biological fathers, especially the ones who got abused by their biological fathers. It's, it's even better for the ones that do not have fathers at all. But the ones that got abused by their biological fathers, when you're associating God to a father, it's hard for them to connect. It's hard for them to relate because... If their biological father treated them that way and you say that's God, then it can't connect. But to those of us who are blessed and have always been blessed, you know, with amazing dads, when you say God is a father, we can so relate. And that's how I relate with God. Seriously, since I understood they say God is your father, I relate with him like that. Sometimes me and him were just doing a chat like we're talking right here. That's how I talk with God. It's not like I go and I'm doing, oh Lord, you know, mm -mm -mm. I'm discussing. Me and him were having a chat. I'm like, God, you know, this thing like this. I really don't like it. Though. The thing pain me, provoke me, oh Papa God. The thing they hurt me for my bone marrow. But what can we do, you know, that kind of stuff like that. That's how I converse with God. And that's my prayer. It's not like I would have to do some other extra, extra kind of prayer. No. That's how I talk with God. And he hears me. He answers me. He does the things. I think my nails actually got this way. I'd, I'd, I'd even prayed and forgotten. I prayed and prayed and prayed and then left it, you know. And then someday one of my friends was just like, oh, princess, you did your French manicures today. And I was like, hmm, French, what? And then I looked at my nails. I was like, oh, my God. I was in awe. I was totally in awe. I'm like, what? 
finally you know so god can do a lot of things there is nothing god cannot do nothing he cannot turn around there is nothing absolutely nothing you just have to fully trust him you i mean like you have to totally and completely trust him not partially sometimes we trust him partially that's why we don't see the things that we desire happening we don't see them when you trust god fully with your whole heart and say lord take over i surrender this all to you you would see results you would see results i'm a product of a product i'm not saying it because it happened to the people of old it has happened to me personally and i'm in this generation this time as well so if it has happened to me it can happen to you too but you just need to trust god you need to play your part you have to trust God that he can do it and he's going to do it for you. He said, he said to, um, um, to Abraham, as far as your eyes can see, I'm going to give it to you. So it was not dependent on him anymore. He had set his part and Abraham had to do his part. So Abraham had to do whatever he needed to do to make himself see as far as possible. If he meant he was going to look for a stone and stand on it and look further than him standing on the ground, he would have to do it. That's supposed to be him. Who would find a way to see further than further, you know? So, eh, that's it. Let's go. We'll pray. We'll do the birthday party. And then we'll do the Bible party. Welcome, Mr. Walter Wovala. And welcome to whoever is here. I'm seeing somebody clicking, but I'm not seeing their comment coming up. So, I can't know who it is. I can't see their name come up. I've, I've not seen them pop up in the live stream, but I'm seeing their likes. I can't remember the picture. I know some people's profile pictures. So when they click on the like button and press the like button, I can be able to confidently say this is the person. But right now, I can say I can see an, a couple of people clicking and and liking, but I don't know who they are because the profiles are different. They're strange or maybe they've not been here for a while or they've changed their profile pictures. So I'm really sorry. Don't get mad at me. OK, so let's pray. Father, we thank you for this brand new day you've given to us. It's a day you've made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. Because of your goodness, because of your protection, because of your love, because of your kindness. Father, we're alive today. You fought seen and unseen battles on our behalf. You took us out safely and brought us back safely home. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We pray, oh God, that even as we start this session of a chapter a day today, I pray that it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, and heard. Because you would increase while I decrease. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to give us a matter of the learner to speak a word in season to every weary heart who is going to pop up on this live stream to listen. Take preeminence, O oh God, because I know you always hear an answer. I avail myself to be used by you totally and completely, surrendering all and all to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So let's go. It's birthday party time birthday party so the first person is mr louis chair mr louis chair was like a big brother to us the mom was staying um close to our house and then he visited sometime he's not based in in our country in where we were then so he visited and oh he was really this amazing person and we connected and we kept talking and we've been talking on social media and he's been great he's an amazing person i think he loves football too that was one other area where we clicked because he loves football. I love football. I really love that game called football. Like almost all the male figures, almost all, almost all the male figures connected to me kind of play football at one point in time. Some are still playing, some are still professionally in need and some still just play. They just love it like that, you know. So yeah, um, happy birthday to you, Mr. Louis Chair. And then we have Mom Gracie B. Mom Gracie B is like one of my small sisters, <laughs> and when I say small sisters like that, they don't really look like small sisters. They kind of look bigger than me. Like almost all my younger sisters kind of look bigger than me. Yeah, well, physical look like our um, physical size is, they would think they're bigger than me, but for our biological size, nope, I'm the bigger one. So, <laughs> yeah, and uh She's actually an amazing person. She does really great fascinators and other things. I don't know the other things she does, but she's a virtuous woman to the core. Oh my God. And then she can sing. So, well, if she sees this video, of course, she'll definitely see this video. 
she can put a link to her business on here i don't know what it's an instagram page or it's a facebook page or so or it's a website or whichever or it's a facebook page or it's a whatsapp number so people can get to connect to her and purchase her products and services so it's allowed if i actually did you a birthday thingy here and i didn't tell you it's allowed when you come in you watch the video you can actually put a link to your products and services so people can go directly to your web page or your website or your page or whatever it is and get to connect with you and get to purchase your products that's how we support our own okay okay the next person is mom chair christabel mom chair christabel is a small that we actually met in church bible outreach ministries and she was um this amazing young lady who came through and she kind of joined the choir yeah so that's where we became closer because i'm a music person i love music with a passion you know i'm i'm not an artist but i love music okay i'm a music minister i think but i'm not an artist so let people not get it twisted because most of the times when i say i love music people just think i'm an artist no i'm not okay so mom check christabel also came and she joined the choir she's a very hard working young lady and we've disconnected for a while now i don't know but on social media we're still a little bit connected once in a while we get connected with chad and that but she's great okay another person is uh, mr kelly bright mr kelly bright um why do we connect i'm not sure maybe christian gospel radio a whole lot of people we kind of connected on the christian gospel radio when i was working there physically like permanently when i was working there full time we kind of connected from there and then we we you know i was doing a calling program so so a lot of people have my numbers because the days where you go to the studio and the studio phone is acting up you have to use your personal phone but not a lot of people knew that it was my personal number that i used to use sometimes you know we just said oh there's a change of numbers today you can use this 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 number and you know a couple of people knew it was my number so they kept it <laughs> and i used to get a lot of buzzes you know but it was good it was fun all the way i'll do it again if i have to again and again and again okay i think that's where i met um pastor kelly bright and then um pastor kelly bright can smile for the world no i'm probably mixing up pastor kelly bright and pastor kelly joel uh, okay whichever sorry forgive me for that and then the next person is Mam Helly B. We also met on social media as well. Um, like I said, the way I had people on social media is through their comments, what is on their wall, what they post, you know. I kind of see people when I see their comments and it really intrigues me and all that. I follow them up and then go send them a friend request. And then we have Mam Gina uh, Mam Gina A. Diallo. Mam Gina A. Diallo also connected on Facebook the same way. And it's been great. These are some of the people that always keep encouraging me from time to time and telling me, oh, you're doing a great job. Keep the good work up. And God bless you and more strength and all that. Thank you so much. And then we have Mam Rilin Bay as well. Happy birthday to you. We have Mam Solis Dilange. Happy birthday to you as well. These are all amazing people that I got to connect with on Facebook. And then we have Mam Raisa Bettina. Happy birthday to you as well. So let's take this on again. Happy birthday, Mr. Luis Chair. Happy birthday, Mam Gracie B. Happy birthday, Mam Chair Christabel. Happy birthday, um, Mr. Kelly Bride. Oh, Mr. Kelly Bride and I met in the university. It was in the university. We studied at the same university. Yeah, we studied at the same university, but I think he was ahead of me, if I'm not mistaken. We studied journalism and mass communication together, and then um, we separated. We went our separate ways. We lost contact, but after some time, we got connected again on Facebook. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Kelly Bright. He's going to be so mad that I was getting mixed up with him and some other person. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mam Gina A. Diallo. Happy birthday, Mam Rilin Bay. Happy birthday. Mam Raisa Bettina, Mam Haley B, and Mam Solis Dilange. Happy birthday to all these amazing people. You all are doing great. I wish you all the very best. And I pray that God is going to bless you all tremendously. Okay. So let's pray for the birthday people. Sign out of the birthday party and get into the 
Bible party. Let's get a Bible party started. Father, we thank you for all these amazing people. We pray, O oh God, that you bless them. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives. Rebuke every devourer in the mighty name of Jesus. As you open new pages upon their lives today, write beautiful stories on these lives. So that by your grace, these people are going to be smiling, dancing, singing, and rejoicing for the rest of their days if you tarry to come. And of course, like that, they'll come back here same time next year if you tarry to come to give testimonies personally of your goodness upon their lives. Thank you, King of Glory, because I know you always hear an answer. I pray, oh Father, that their gifts are going to make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. And their light is going to shine brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. They will increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men to the glory of your name. Father, I also pray, oh God, that you're going to open opportunities and doors for them that only you can and shut every door that is not of you. So, too, connect them divinely to people and things that will cause them to progress and disconnect them divinely from people and things that will cause them not to move forward or to retrogress or not to believe in themselves. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to strategically position destiny helpers available for them to run with a vision and help them when help is needed, when they cry out for help, when they cry out for for help from anywhere, oh Lord, help is going to show up because you must have put people out there for the sakes. As same, Lord, you strategically position them as well to also be helpers for other people's sake. That makes them destiny helpers to other people as well. Father, I pray, oh God, that you're going to teach them how to get to the top and stay permanently there. Because only you can take one up and bring one down. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to give them all it takes. Even as they go on living their lives fulfilling purpose, when they get to that point where they feel overwhelmed, they feel like they want to give up or back out, they'll hear a clean and clear voice that's going to say, this is the way walk down in it. So they're not going to stroke. They're not going to derail the part. They're going to stay on course, fulfilling purpose and glorifying your father who is in heaven. That as the growing nation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, you're going to use them as these people to manifest and glorify yourself to the world in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to be trailblazers, space setters, wall changes, and make them able to go out there and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessing meet blessings in their life. Favor meets favor in their lives. As you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Perfect all that concerns them. Give them a Psalms 126 state. Continuous state of laughter and singing. Thank you, Lord, because I know you're a faithful God who always answers. You never sleep in a slumber. You always hear us when we call. So we say thank you because we know you've heard us. Father, I pray, oh God, whatever they lay your hands on prosperity, say wherever we tread our feet upon, you give it to us as a possession. Do same. Let it become a practical reality in the lives of these ones. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because we know you always hear and answer us. And Jesus mighty and blessed name of prayer thanksgiving amen 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 let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen as we have prayed amen let it be let it be let it be so amen 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 in their lives amen as we have prayed amen 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 <laughs> we seal every prayer made with the blood of jesus and we say thank you jesus because we know it is settled we know you've done it already in jesus name we pray amen somebody say a big amen let's dive in straight to the bible party bible party and our Bible party is taken today from the book of Numbers, chapter 9, and it has 23 verses. That's going to be a short read. I'll be ready. I'm always ready. I was born ready. <laughs> okay, so let's go. Numbers chapter 9, And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. In the fourteenth day of this month, at even, ye shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof shall ye keep it. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, that they should keep the Passover. 
And they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the first month at even in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so did he so did the children of Israel. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man, that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by the dead body of a man, wherefore we are kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month at even they shall keep it, and eat with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor break any bone of it. According to all the ordinances of the Passover, they shall keep. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from amongst his people, because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. That man shall bear his sin. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord according to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. He shall have one ordinance both for the stranger and for him that was born in the land. And on the day that the tabernacle was reared up, the cloud covered the tabernacle, namely the tent of the testimony at even there was upon the tabernacle as it were the appearance of fire until the morning so it was always so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of fire by night and when the cloud was taken up from the tabernacle then after that the children of israel journeyed and in the place where the cloud abode there the children of israel pitched their tents at the commandment of the Lord, the children of Israel journeyed, and at the commandment of the Lord, they pitched. As long as the cloud abode upon the tabernacle, they rested in their tents. And when the cloud tarried long and upon the tabernacle many days, then the children of Israel kept the charge of the Lord and journeyed not. And it was so, and so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, According to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode, fr when the cloud abode from even until the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed, or whether it were two days or a month or a year that they cloud tarried upon the tabernacle, remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents, and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord, at the commandment of the Lord, by the hand of Moses. Wow, this is an interesting one today. I kind of caught a lot of things. A lot, oh, I would say a lot of things caught my attention and all. So um, the first part was that they needed to keep the Passover. There were lots of things that they did in the old that the Lord was telling them that they still needed to keep doing it for some reason. So sometimes we we as Christians, God will tell us to do a thing and then we'll do it the one time and then we'll just let it go. Maybe God wants us to keep doing it. God wants us to be consistent at that kind of thing. First of all, let me give an example. For example, maybe God wants a time out with you like maybe 10 20 minutes or 30 minutes it depends it varies for people and 
we call it as Christians, we call it quiet time. So God wants you to have a quiet time with him, like a time where you both can relate. And you do it one time and you think that's it. No, as a child of God, if you're still on earth and you're not dead, quiet time is of the essence. It's like, like very, very important. You, there's just no way I can overemphasize it. It's very important. So you can't afford to just do it once and then leave it. You have to do it consistently. You have to keep doing it. So the Holy Spirit was telling them here, this was about consistency in doing some of the ceremonies and some of the things that they needed to do. He wanted them to be consistent with it. So that was the um, first part that struck me. Consistency is very, very important. And then the next part was, yes, these people always get um, punished for maybe wanting to go and do a sacrifice when they're unclean, when they're by a dead person, or when they had some funny things happening on their bodies, maybe scabies and stuff like that. When you had all those things, you could not go to the temple to go and sacrifice, to go and do an offering and all those things. So these people decided to ask, oh, so in this case, we've heard this for this and this and this, for this other thing. What about this case? Because some people would have just gone like, okay, since Moses didn't say anything about um, unclean people or non-clean people, let's just leave it. It means that we can also do it. Or some people who not want to do it would just say, eh, all the other things that God had said, he had said that people who were unclean should not participate. They should be kept aside until they're fine, until they become clean. That's when they can participate. So because they don't want to do the thing, they'll just go ahead and sit and say, okay, no. So I'll give this example and it's an example that is like me. You know, there's sometimes that they kind of give us extra activities to do in school. And when I don't want to do an extra activity, when I don't feel like it, if they don't give it to me, I wouldn't go and ask. But we know quite well that when we go to ask and like, okay, there's this activity going on, but we've not seen our names on the list. For some weird reason, they'll add our names on the list, even when we're not supposed to be there. So we really don't like to go asking, you know. So these people could have just been like us, you know. They'll be like, mm, we're not going to ask. If we ask now, Moses is going to tell us that, yes, we would have to do the sacrifice. <laughs> you see? And of course, they asked that's exactly what happened. Moses told them that God had said, Moses said he was going to ask from God. And God told him that, okay, so this is what, that's another thing as well. Every little thing we want to do, we need to ask from God. It's important to ask God. It's important to hear from God what God is saying concerning a matter, what God is saying concerning a thing. It's important to ask from God. So um, it shows that these people were like, mm, okay, they were really a little bit, um, bought it and they wanted to to know what was happening what was going on so they came and asked the question Moses so what is going to happen to us people who are unclean maybe they're defiled you know being with a dead person maybe someone dies in your in your area or in your place and all that so being with the dead it makes them defiled they were considered as people were defiled someone dies around you the per you're considered like you people around the person are considered defiled or let's just say in the household you're considered defiled so in other cases you cannot do um you cannot go and do offerings because you're defiled so they wanted to be sure about this one as well would you also partake in the passover if you have somebody like that if you have a situation like that moses went to the lord and the lord told him that yes it's okay you can go ahead and do it and not just only that even if you're not in the town you should do it yes a lot of christians a lot of them are hypocrites why when they're close to their papa and mama to their leaders to their elders to the people that know them well they do well when they're away I know there are lots and lots of things that people are still surprised. Wherever I am, people are surprised that I still do them. And the people that I left are surprised that I still do them. I don't do them because someone is forcing me. I do them because I had a personal conviction and a personal understanding of the importance. So whether I'm in my church in my country or I'm in a different church out of my country, I just still do those things. They're good things, so I don't see any need why I should stop them, you know, like that. Because before, um, some I there was a time I remember that we were supposed to have an event and I was supposed to sing in the choir. And the kind of dress that I was supposed to wear, I've been convicted by the Holy Spirit personally. I'm talking about me, so let people not generalize this. I said personally. The Holy Spirit had told me not to wear that kind of dress. So 
I told them that I was not going to sing. They were shocked to their bones. And I remember the choir master saying to me, it's just a one day thing. You're not going to die if you do it. I said, I'm going to be disobeying God if I do it. So it doesn't even matter if I was going to have to wear that dress for just a few seconds. As long as God had told me not to wear it, I can't wear it. I don't care for what reason. So this is me who is so passionate about music. And of course, with the passion that I have and the fact that I'd gone for every single practice, these people were all in awe that I was going to let go of singing because of what God told me. So we, I think they ended up changing the uniform. I guess that was God for you because God wanted me to sing because I, I knew that I wasn't going to flicker. I was not going to flicker. I've gotten to a point where I keep telling God that he should help me to be like, to be like Joseph, that at every point in time, when something is wrong, is wrong. And I'm not wanting to do it, not because I want to be a people's pleaser or something. I'm not doing it because I don't want to hurt my God. Because there are some things that don't seem hurtful to people, but it's hurtful to God. So these people are telling you not to do it. Like I said, I told us already, just recently, someone was telling me that they don't understand that if I'm doing all this thing, only this Bible, Bible thing, I'll really not make money out of it. And I'm like, truth be told, I'm not doing this thing for money. But I know that this thing is eventually going to get me money, but not this one. I don't know, though. It, it depends. It varies on how God wants to do it. But I know that God is going to make me go viral. And of course, if I go viral, I'll get money. <laughs> so I'm not moved. The fact that God has told me that I was going to get viral, it's a process. It's a process. And the funny thing is that when it comes to social media, there can just be a day that it just hits. Boom. And that's it. You just go there. And it just keeps climbing. Everybody has that day. A lot of people have that day. I... Like some of my posts have kind of gone really far. The reach was really good. I was shocked. The engagement was top notch and everything. I was like, what? But I wanted that to happen on YouTube, but it has always been happening on Facebook. And I got to realize that a lot of my audience are on Facebook. So why not? I just get back to Facebook. I was still focused on YouTube, but my audience, the real people are on Facebook. So why would I go and be putting information on YouTube when the people whom I want them to receive this information and get blessed and get transformed by on Facebook? It makes no sense. That was stupidity. But I was just focused on, I want to build YouTube because I heard YouTube gets monetized and stuff like that. So I wanted to put my content to get money, right? I wasn't just going to put it and then be losing out, you know, for nothing. Meanwhile, I didn't need to pay anything, of course. It's just the same content that I'm putting out, but... Just the fact that I'm putting the content and following people and all that, I could get monetized. I did get monetized on YouTube. I am monetized on YouTube, actually. But it's not the way people think it is. So I see a lot of people doing all kinds of things to get monetized. And then when they get monetized, they start feeling frustrated because it's not the way people made it seem. No, you don't have as much money, especially if you don't have a lot of following, if you don't have a lot of viewers. You wouldn't. You won't get the money that people are making you think they get. So when someone comes and says they have a thousand dollars every day on YouTube, please check their followings, check their views. You know, some of those people get to be having like hundreds of thousands of views. Some people get to be having like millions of views before they get that kind of amount of money. Okay. So don't get yourself deceived. Don't go now drop your, your paid job your eight to five job and say, oh, you're going to focus on YouTube. You might get so frustrated and even get into depression. Don't, don't do that. Please, <laughs> please don't do that. When you've seen that you're already able to focus a need and it's hitting the, the jackpot every single time. Okay. You can leave the paid job if you feel like, and you want to focus full time on your YouTube. But if you're not there yet, please don't do that. Except God tells you to though. If God tells you that, oh, go full-time YouTube, go full-time YouTube. If God tells you go full-time Facebook, go full-time Facebook. It's at God's command. He backs you up, you know. So I know that I would eventually go viral. I'm just doing my thing and loving it and loving it all the way. The, the part that blesses my heart is when I get people giving their testimonies. Not really about the money, sincerely speaking, you know. So... It, it's it's it gets a little bit tricky when it's your full-time work as opposed to okay you have a side a side hustle 
you have something so you're earning a salary but when it's a full-time thing no you have to work as hard as possible so you can get these things um right you know like that so yeah i do some things that i'm not like some people would have felt i would stop doing them because i had left my country i had left my church i'm attending different churches but no i had a personal conviction on me doing those things and for the most part they're good things so i didn't even see the reason why i should be dropping them it just became a part of me it just became a normal thing so i didn't see any reason why i was supposed to be dropping them because i moved away from my country so people that i meet are surprised that i still do some of those things and people that are in my country that see me sometimes and see my pictures and all those kinds of things they're like princess you still do this yeah i still do you know so yes um the god was telling them that wherever you go do the things that you have to do so even if you're not in town maybe i'm um i was an israelite and i traveled i went somewhere maybe i went to egypt for some business deal or something even in egypt when is the 14th day of the month of the first month you have to do the passover so you have to do it wherever you are you had to do it so wherever you go be a child of god it doesn't matter you're not only going to be a child of god when you're in your country or when you're in your church or when it's sunday you have to be a child of god all around wherever you are be a child of god this is how i'm actually connecting the scripture to our daily lives be a child of god wherever do the things that god has commanded you to do wherever you are you will not be a child of god here and then the other place you're not a child of god and then i told you all how i was posting some really seductive pictures on social media and then posting real information now so when i post real information nobody's doing nothing and when i post lots of pictures i have like likes and comments flooding in and all i'm like this ain't me i really want people to get the message but the only way people are going to get this message is if they stay on my timeline and i'm consistent with putting these messages so i was thinking at some point i was instead thinking of taking away the messages and just keep putting my flirty pictures and all those kinds of pictures but Holy Spirit said, young lady, is that really what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And so I had to do a rethink. And I started doing my things and posting my regular pictures and posting my um, important messages. And for some weird reason, people started reading those important messages, started following me. People followed me and really liked what I do. They started re in reading and commenting on all those important messages. And it really gave me a push. Like I said, for five years, someone was following me and saw my consistency and added me as a friend. And that friendship has helped me in diverse ways, like in really crazy ways, in ways you just can't imagine. So imagine if I was not consistent. Imagine if I was living that dual life that I was living. Let your life everywhere be the same because God is everywhere. Like I'm saying, I would emphasize every single time that I can. God is omnipresent and he's the one you should bother about not hurting. I cannot do this kind of evil to my God. When you have that kind of mindset about the God, your God conscious, you will not do some things that you do because you're people conscious. Some people do some things they do in the secret or in other places because they're people conscious. Anyways, my papa is not here. My mama is not here. My mother is not here. My brother is not here. My sister is not here. So I can do this thing. They're people pleasers, but we need to be God pleasers. So if we get God conscious, we're going to know that God is omnipresent. So we can't be doing this kind of evil to our God. Okay. So that's another thing I read there that caught my attention. And there was another place again. It says, um, it says there was a way that needed to do something. There was a particular way that it needed to do it. Oh, and then they said, these are people who had issues. So imagine that if God is expecting someone who is away from their country to do the Passover, which sometimes is not very easy because if you're in a country where the people are not familiar with the things, they're not peculiar, they might look at you strange or weird, but it's your thing, you do it. I see our, our um, Muslim people, 
when they want to pray, it's their prayer time. They don't care where they are. If they have to put it at the front of their shop, they're going to put it at the front of their shop and do. If they have to put it in, when it's time, it's non-negotiable for them. It is just non-negotiable. So we need to do these things. And so the Holy Spirit was saying, um, God was telling Moses and saying that if the ones that even have a dead body and all, and the ones that are away from the country are supposed to do it. What more of the ones that are in the country? Like you can't even afford not to do it. If you don't do it, you'll be cut off. Uh, it's crazy. I don't want to be cut off. So it had to be with bitter, unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Nothing else. So you know, go make your own defense that. <laughs> A lot of us, there's something that they call in my village, pool fish. Pool fish, they can make pool fish on pool pork. It's done with plantain that is dried and mixed with ginger and some other things. I really loved it. Like my aunt was an expert. My grandma as well. My paternal grandma, she was an expert in that one. And then my maternal grandma was an expert. See me talking about food. I love food, old people. Me, I'm not denying that one. Even though people call me sport shop, I really don't care. My, pa- my paternal grandma was the one who was doing poor fish and everything. And she used to do cocky as well. Cocky was so nice. We used to do cookie every Sunday because of my grandma. And she doesn't like us to go and grind it in the machine. No, no we'll pound it in the mortar. Like, and make it as fluffy as possible. Say, no meal. My grandmother knew how to cook. And then my maternal grandmother was the one who would make us kwakoko and banga soup. Ha, or kwakoko Bible. Man. My grandmothers were just experts at what they do. Okay, so um, there's this thing they call black soup. It's made with cocoa leaf and all. The local traditional one, they don't put salt and all those things because you mix it. There's a way you have to eat it with the pool that will give it the taste that is it's supposed to be, which is nice. Like it's really delicious, but we don't know how to do it because we used to eat our pool on its own side and they want to eat the fufu and soup on its own side. So we could not get a hank of it. So when we come to, <laughs> when we leave the village, when we're in the village, they normally just pity us and let us put salt in ours, you know, or put maggi or something uh, because we didn't know how to eat it the traditional style. So when we go back now to <laughs> to town, when, we, when we're when done with holidays, we go back now to town, we say we cook that jebo version. <laughs> we cook our version where, while we're making the black soup, because it just had to be cocoa leaves that is, boiled and cooked and grounded and all that then you can put your ingredients so they were not putting in any ingredients in the village you just cook it you mash it cook it and then you grind it very smooth and all that and then you add a little bit of water and all and stir and boil it for some time they were not putting no ingredients as we'll put all kinds of ingredients ginger garlic and you spice it up <laughs> god did not want us to be spicing nothing like the passover he told these people it's unleavened bread and bitter herbs don't go do your jebo version. It is unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You know, we're like that. We like to fix things a lot. So the Holy Spirit was telling them there and reminding them how the, the, the meal for the Passover had to be. Probably there were people who probably want to do something else. Um, it says, but the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbeareth to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off. Yeah. Because it makes no sense. Someone who has traveled, someone who is even like in a kind of place is supposed to do it and gets to do it. Then you that you're in the town, like, are you serious? You're not even on a journey. You're not even busy or something. You don't do it. You'll be cut off. That's terrible. And sometimes we give those excuses. I remember um, talking to a friend, I think a couple of days ago, and I was saying that I, I don't want, I don't mean to badge in on, on, on women though. But this is what gets to happen sometimes. You see a woman running to church and she's late. And then you ask her, she'll say the children. And it doesn't sound logical. It's just not the children. It's just that coming to church, you don't have anybody to sanction you. You don't have anybody to give you a query. That's why you take it for granted. Why? Because I said, I asked them the question. You're the same woman, right? From Monday to Friday, you're the same woman, right? Why would you choose to take by God's day to rest or God's day to slow down? Why? Because on Monday, 
These children go to school. You make them breakfast and their snacks and everything. They eat, they take a bath, they go to school, they're not late. And you go to work, you're not late. And church starts later than work. So how is it possible that is the children that are making you to be late on Sunday? No, it's not. It's because you know there is no boss who is going to give you a quarrel. It's because you know that there is no one who needs you to be on time. Because if you're not on time, you'll miss the children. If the children are not on time to school, they will miss whatever all other children have learned. Or they might not even get a chance to enter school if they're late. That's it. It is that simple. And we need to be sincere to ourselves. Can you really stand in front of God and tell God truly that it's because of your children that you're late to church? Or because you chose that, okay, it's God's time and God is not going to fight you. God understands. So you just take your time and do your thing sluggishly and then you get to church. No, it's not right. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. You're in there. You're, you're in the town. You're in the country and they're doing Passover. You're not doing it. Then what happens to someone who even traveled? What happened to someone who is on the journey? And they're still obliged to do it. Then you really have no excuse. See, it's about time we stop doing these things. Sometimes we're asking, why is the power of God not being manifested through us? How would the power of God be manifested through you when you can't even take little tiny wincy bitsy instructions and put them to use? And leave them and leave by these instructions. How do you expect God to manifest his power to you? Welcome, Mr. Waters Wovala. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. God bless you. Where? How? It's not possible. It's not. It's not possible. So you see, we have to do things right. We really, really have to do things right. Okay? We have to do it the way God wants us to do it. And it says now, it gives some people an opportunity. If you're a sojourner, if you're a stranger, and you just came to visit, and you like to do it, do it. Of course, I will go some places, some good thing that they're doing that will benefit me, and I'll not join. I go join. I take join. I go join do. Me like this, I'll join do. So if you go to a place and they're doing something, it's not bad. It's a godly thing, and it's important. You're not used to, you don't know about it. Join them and do it. Um, one of the apostles say that be all things to all men to win them over. He didn't say go and be a prostitute to win prostitutes over. I beg you, because that's how some people start turning it. Oh, so I should go to the nightclub to go and win those who are in the nightclub over. So I should go to the prostitute join and dress like a prostitute to go and win prostitutes over. No, be all things to all men to win them over the right way. So you cannot be a prostitute to win a prostitute over. Mm -mm. you cannot go and be a thief to win thieves over no that's not what the apostle was saying don't get it twisted there are some things that you can do just like the people do like here i'm here in time to connect with the people and to feel like i belong i wear some of their clothes they're cool i really like the wrapper and the stuff i wear some of those things i use some of their things they're really pretty cool oh yeah so that's me being something to them and then connecting with them. They'll feel like, oh, this girl really belongs to us and all those kinds of things. She understands our things. She likes our things, you know, and they can be able to listen to me easily. Even though language barrier, she, how am I going to preach in Thai language? I didn't know any Thai. <laughs> yeah. But that's enough for them to, to, to just like me and like the things I do. And I could pray for them and they have an encounter. You just never know. So. Yeah. So if you're a stranger and you come and you see the Passover thing you want to do, you can join. That was they had an opportunity to join. And then um and then they had to do that and uh, some other thing was here. Okay. So I the the other thing that struck me was when they said that until the cloud disappeared before they had to move and when the cloud was there they had to stay so if the cloud was there for 10 days they'll be there for 10 days if the cloud was there for one month or one year they'll be there for one month they're not moving if you decided to move you would probably get astray or you get lost because it was the presence of god that was guiding them and it was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night 
So when they saw these signs, that's when they knew that they had to move. Are you the person who is moving when God has not told you to move? God has put a stop sign. You just still want to move. Probably because maybe your friends are moving. Maybe your sister or brothers are moving. Maybe your father or mother is moving. So you just want to move. Don't move because people are moving. Move because God wants you to move. God gave them a sign. Moving is when they cloud by day. Staying in their tents. They stayed in their tents. When is the pillar of fire by night? I had to stay. So we need to listen to God at every point in time. He might tell you to stay at this place. Yeah. He might tell you to go to this country. He might tell you to move to this place. He might tell you to be here for 10 days. He might tell you to be there for one month, two months, three months. He might tell you to be there for 10 years. But let it be God. Let it be God. Because when you have his assurance and his backing, you're not perturbed. You're not worried. You know, um, a woman of God said something the last time and says, you can actually drink from the well of God and from the streams of God, the streams of his mercy and the well of his mercy. So they're different. The streams of his mercy is when you've, when you fall that you've made a mistake and then you're just asking him for mercy. And when you actually wait on him and then he pours his mercy out on you. So which one would you prefer? I prefer the streams of mercy not the streams of mercy i prefer the well of mercy not the streams where i made a mistake and then there are consequences now then i'm asking for mercy lord mercy no sometimes those consequences are grievous you can't just recover <laughs> you can't recover from the consequences see what happened to judas he could not recover and he went and killed himself so sad i wish he could not because peter also made a mistake but he asked for forgiveness and he was forgiven. So let's be very, very careful. Okay. And then what else did I, what else caught my attention? I think that was basically the last part. Okay. That's it. So if God's presence, just like um, Moses said, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, we ain't leaving this place. I love that song too. If your presence doesn't go with me, Lord, I don't want to leave this place. Lord, I need you real. As I go from here, lead me by your love and grace. May your presence fill me every day. And may your glory lead the way. Let your glory fall. Let your presence come. And may your presence go with me. If your presence doesn't go with me. Lord, I don't want to leave this place. Lord, I need you real. Let your glory come and may your presence go with me. If God's presence is not going with me, I ain't leaving this place, man. I don't want to move when God didn't say move. I don't want to be at the place where God didn't say go be there. Because God only backs what he assigns. If he says go to Motombolombo, if that's a village that exists, I'm going there because I know he's going to back me up. Just like he said to Isaac, don't go to Egypt. Stay in barren land and plant. You would have us a hundredfold. And David took to that instruction. He held on to the word and the word became life. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. When you speak to things, you give them life. Whether you're conscious or unconscious about it. So sometimes I... It took me a while, but it worked. I stopped. Even my exclamations are beautiful things. You know these greetings that people say, how far? I say far above principalities and powers that in heaven places by Christ Jesus. You know what I'm decreeing and declaring like that? How far? Man, don't die. Who die? Who kill you? Where to kill you? I know deal. How are you? Man, the job manage. Eh? You be manager. <laughs> That's just by the way, it's okay.
No, I'm great. I'm awesome. People who know me, they know now. Sometimes they ask me, do you have problems? Problems are inevitable when you're still on planet Earth. Sha. The devil is still looking for ways to bring you down and make you depart from the faith. What do you think? You think he's going to come and give you by sugar, sugar, butter, butter things. You will look for trouble. Ah. So, of course, that's what happens. So, please, follow God. Keep his commandments. Do the things that he has told you to do. And every point in time, ask him what he would have you do. And when he gives you the instructions, do them. Don't change because you move from where you are. Let's be God conscious so that we're going to know his omnipresence. And we're not going to be hurting him like we are hurting him in the back. As we are hurting him in secret. Because in the open, we're an entirely different person. And in secret, we're an entirely different person. That's not what God wants from us. He wants us to be the same person in secret and in the open. So that he can manifest, he can glorify himself through us. So that we can truly be the kind of temple he wants to use. And he would show his power and splendor through us. Thank you everybody. I always get to say I love you so, so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates. Each time we upload a new video, or we get to go live like right now. If you desire to listen to the audio Bible, just let me know. I'll send you the links in your inbox. And you can enjoy my voice by listening to the Bible. Yeah, it's not going to be professionally smooth, but it's going to be something. At least you're hearing the word of God. Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So please pick up yourself an audio Bible made by moi. Okay? <laughs> okay, so let's pray and sign off for today. Tomorrow is another day. Numbers chapter 10. Get to read ahead of time. Let's come back here and have a soul time together, okay? Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, oh Lord. We pray, oh God, that you're going to craft the word on the fleshy tables of our hearts so we're going to be able to leave thereby. Give us the grace to do the things that you want us to do and do them right. Lord, that we're going to be God pleasers and not men pleasers in the mighty name of Jesus. That we're going to do every single thing that pleases you, even when it doesn't please some men sometimes. But as long as it pleases you, we're going to be game for it. Thank you, King of Glory. Bless those who are just starting today. Give the rest of their days spark and life. And for those who are half of their day, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you're going to give them an awesome rest of their day. And for those of us who are about to sleep somehow, you're going to give us sound sleep and sweet dreams and cause us to dream dreams and see visions just like your word says. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.